In this situation, there is a boy on a sled with a combined weight of 800 newtons. Another boy is pulling them with a rope with a force of 100 newtons. Since the sled is moving with a constant velocity, there must also be some friction. So what we'd like to figure out is what is that force of friction and also how big is the normal force. As always, we start by diagramming all of the forces acting upon the boy in the sled. In this case, we have the force of gravity, or the weight. Then we have the tension in the rope. There is the normal force. And then finally, we have the force of friction. Now we'll draw our component diagram. We'll make our horizontal and vertical axes. And we'll add the weight vector, the normal force, and the frictional force, all of which already happen to lie along one axis or the other. Since the tension force does not lie along an axis, we'll have to resolve it into components. First, we have an upward component, which we'll call Ty, and then a horizontal component we'll call Tx. Conceptually, you can think of Tx as being the part of the tension that pulls the sled along. Ty partially supports the sled against gravity, Thus, the normal force is going to be less than it would have been if the rope had been horizontal. As expected, our components establish a rectangle of which the tension vector is its resultant. I'll label theta in the diagram and also recognize that the right side of the rectangle is actually the same as Ty. With a little trigonometry that you should check, we can find that the horizontal component Tx is found by T cosine theta and that the vertical component, Ty, is found by T sine theta. Now we'll go ahead and add those components to the component diagram. We can see by the component diagram that the horizontal component of the tension is balanced by the friction force. Likewise, the normal force and the upward component of the tension support the sled against the pull of gravity. Let's formalize these ideas by recognizing that since the sled is moving with a constant velocity, that the net force on the sled must be zero. That can only be true if both the horizontal components and the vertical components add up to zero as well. Now for the all-important force equations. Horizontally, we have the x component of the tension as a positive force and the friction as a negative force. Vertically, we have both the normal force and the vertical component of tension as positive and the weight vector as negative. Next, to solve for the friction, we'll move to the x equations and solve for f. Using the trigonometric relations we found above, we can substitute t cosine theta for tx. Then we just plug in the numbers, calculate, and we find that the force of friction is 86.6 newtons. To find the normal force, We'll use the vertical equation and solve for n. Then we'll use the trigonometric relation to substitute for ty, and we'll use t sine theta. Then just plug in the numbers and calculate again, and we find that the normal force is equal to 750 newtons. As expected, the normal force is less than it would have been if the rope had been horizontal. Now we have a similar situation but instead of being pulled, the boy and the sled are being pushed with a force that is downward with an angle of 30 degrees. In order to make the diagram more visually useful, we'll draw the vector representing the push force as emanating from the boy and the sled. The other forces, the weight, the normal, and the friction, are all the same as before. You might be able to see why the normal force is bigger than it was in the last problem. As before, we'll draw our component diagram starting with axes. Then we'll add the weight, the friction, and the normal force, all of which already lie along axes. The push force not being along an axis will have to be resolved into components. Here is the horizontal component, labeled Px, and the vertical component, labeled Py. Again, the two components establish a rectangle, and the push force is its diagonal. Theta is labeled and we recognize that the right side of the rectangle is Py. This allows us to set up some trigonometric relations similar to before for both the horizontal and vertical components of the push force. We'll add the components of push to the component diagram, horizontal and vertical. 
And now since the sled is moving at a constant speed, we know that the net force is zero. Therefore, the horizontal and vertical components also have to add up to zero. The horizontal force equation shows that the horizontal component of push is positive and the friction is negative. The vertical force equation shows that the normal force is positive, but the weight and the vertical component of the push are negative. Next, if we want to find friction, we'll solve for F and then make the trig substitution, plug in the numbers, and finally calculate our answer as 98.7 newtons. A lot more friction than before because now since there's a part of the push that's downward and thus the normal force is increased, the friction should be increased. To find the normal force, we'll solve for N, make the trig substitution, and then of course put all the numbers in and make our calculation and we find that the normal force is 857 newtons. You might be interested to know that the 114 newton push force was not selected randomly. Given the numbers in the previous problem, I was able to calculate the effect of the surfaces upon the friction. Keeping that constant in this problem, the boy had to push with a larger force because as he pushes down, the normal force is increased and therefore the friction is increased. 114 newtons was the only force that he could use to keep the sled in constant motion.